peeps and welcome to my second tutorial now the first tutorial had a look at the workspace and just gave you a quick look around and much like that tutorial this one is aimed at beginners people that have never used After Effects before so we're just going to cover importing some media so you actually have something to work with um, a very quick look at having a file structure opening a new composition and some of the options available to you then we'll have a quick look at layers in the next tutorial we'll actually get into some basics of animation and it will start to get a bit more exciting okay so let's grab a couple of files so we'll go up to top left file then there's a couple of options we've got here for actually bringing files or media into our project we can go to import and file and much like many other types of software you may have used you'll be able to grab an image some sound anything you need from anywhere on your system I like to use Adobe Bridge if I come up here and choose browse in bridge I'll show you what that is it's um, it's a nice basic piece of software that will help you link all of your Adobe products together so for instance I like to use Adobe Premiere I use Photoshop and I also use After Effects now this helps me keep my media organized uh, it's by no means necessary it's it's just a nice smart piece of software I like to use for example let me go to I made a quick file just over here let's have a look tutorials if I double click on that now you can see I've got two files in here I've just made a football and a gradient background to use for the purposes of this demonstration so if I double click gradient there you go you can see up at the top left that's now imported into the project panel now I'm going to need the football as well so I can open this again double click and there you go so it's kept the same name that it had in Photoshop and you can it tells you just to the left this Photoshop file on the right it tells you the size of that file now this could be a JPEG as well um, there really is no advantage or disadvantage with regards to what you can do with it in After Effects but with using it in conjunction with Photoshop it will actually maintain layers for your project if you want it to for example you could construct a whole scene in Photoshop with many layers and you can import that whole project into After Effects and maintain the structure of those layers now for people that are familiar with After Effects uh, sorry with Photoshop I'm sure you can understand the importance and the power of being able to do that um, for people that are really brand new to this and haven't used Photoshop before don't worry too much about that you don't actually need to use After, uh, Photoshop at all you can use GIMP which is free software that's it's very powerful it's actually an amazing piece of software um, you can get very professional results you can do many of the things in GIMP that you can do in Photoshop uh, maybe it's not quite as intuitive obviously it's freeware so you can't really complain I used to use it I used it for a bit a year or so before I uh, managed to get Photoshop and I would still highly recommend it and of course you can actually there's a lot in After Effects you can create your images directly in here and bypass Photoshop completely or if you're working with photos movies you won't be needing to worry about Photoshop at all okay so before I open a new composition and explain how layers work so I just want to give you a really quick uh, heads up on the importance of files and maintaining um, their structure I suppose you could describe it as let me explain so we've imported these two files I originally made them in Photoshop and I've now imported them into After Effects now let me minimize this and go to my desktop for the sake of this demo I've just put a folder onto my desktop called tutorials obviously this could be anywhere on your computer let me open it and show you so I've got the football and the gradient in here now these are also these are Photoshop files but After Effects every time I open it is going to look in this folder for these two files now if I was to remove these files uh, or indeed delete them next time I start up After Effects it's going to look in this folder for those files and it's not going to find them and it's going to tell you those files are missing now obviously when you've only got two files that is by no means a massive problem when you've got a big project and you've got lots going on it's very easy to delete a folder here or there to move things about and trust me I've learned this the hard way and I, I 
God, I wanted to smash my face straight into the keyboard because I probably lost the whole day's work um, by deleting the wrong folder randomly when I was cleaning out my uh, desktop or defragging my hard drive. And uh, basically, make yourself a folder for your project. doesn't matter where you keep it. Just keep it somewhere and keep it in the same place. Now, the plus side of After Effects working like this is that if I was to open Photoshop, change one of these files, as in edit the football, I could make the football green for example, resave it and then go back into After Effects, that file within After Effects I would then have a green football for example, so I'm sure you can see the importance of that, I can edit things on the fly, for instance I could have a nice background in my animation, I could go into Photoshop, edit that, as long as the name stays the same when I save it, every time I open After Effects back up everywhere the asset is used in my animation it will then be changed um, that really is a powerful and I'll be showing you a bit more the, the importance of that in the future but I just wanted to give you guys a heads up because like I say I've learned the hard way and uh, it's very very frustrating to lose a lot of work by deleting a file by accident okay so we've got some files in our project let's open a new composition so composition new composition up at the top. We can name this composition whatever we like obviously. Um, I think I'll call it tutorial just because I can. Or tutorial. Let's, uh, let's at least try and spell properly while I'm doing this. Um, now if you look down here we've got presets, uh, you've got width and height dimensions. This is actually set to the last project I was working on um, which I'm going to stick with for now. You've got many options as you can see along here for different formats. Now, it's worth bearing these in mind, depending on what you're going to be doing with your project, you're obviously going to have different needs for web, TV, film, and so on and so on. So this is where you'd come when you're setting up your composition um, to make those choices. Width and height, self-explanatory, you can lock that for when you're changing it, obviously. Um, frame rate, I always use 30, it says 29.97, I always use 30 frames a second, it's pretty standard, you can use 25, 26 frames a second too. And the time code down here and the duration, this is set, like, it's set for 40 seconds at the moment, that's what I was last working with, I'm going to keep it as that for the time being. So there we go. Now, as you can see it's changed slightly now, we actually have a composition open. Um, We've got our screen in the middle still and we've got a scrub here which we can now scrub through our timeline. Now remember the two assets up here that uh, we've imported, we've got a football and the gradient background. Let's actually bring these into our composition so we can work with them. To do that we can just click and drag. Bosh, there you go. Um, uh, lots of things within After Effects are very user friendly. Like I say this is CS6 and the whole UI and the way it works, they've made it really nice and user friendly and you'll find things very intuitive. So there's your gradient now within our screen. That This area here represents the full screen so when we render the scene this is going to be at full resolution that we decided so this would be at 1920 by 180. So we want the folder as well, uh, the football sorry not the folder. Let's grab that and bring that down. Now as you can see down here, this is our tutorial composition. You can see the title just here at the top and lots of other information which I'll be explaining. Now I've brought the football in but I can't actually see it. That's because these are layers. These two, you've got the gradient and the football, both on separate layers. Now the football is under the gradient which means you can't see it because these layers operate from top to bottom which means the gradient is currently on top of the football. So let me click and move the football up. You can see that black line, so if I move it down and up that is where it's going to place the football. So there you go, if I let go the football is now on top of the gradient. It's very simple stuff, especially if you've worked with uh, Photoshop before or GIMP and many other software programs that use layers. Uh, it works exactly the same in Photoshop. The top layer is the, the media that's going to show on top of your project or composition. Now I called this football alpha because in Photoshop I actually alphaed out the background. Um, for people that are really new, an alpha channel basically describes the transparency. Um, it's, it's 
not a color it's transparency for, for example you, if you look up here in the top left it's as I imported it from Photoshop transparency or alpha is shown as black but when you actually look at it in the projects there's no background you can see when I move it around there's no background here um, so I just thought I'd explain that quickly you hear people talking about alpha channels quite a lot and it's transparency for all intents and purposes so I can resize this football on my screen by the way simply by clicking left clicking and dragging can resize it now you can see it's lost when I'm resizing it it's losing its uh, proportions quite a lot there I could have I can change that by shift clicking so I'm holding left corner hold shift it maintains the aspect uh, the ratio the aspect ratio or the dimensions so you don't have to worry you can resize it and when you're holding shift you don't have to worry about distorting it in any way obviously if I'm not holding shift I can do all sorts of crazy things with it if I hold shift you see it locks so there you go there's my football bang in the middle of the screen and there you can see it at the top on the layers now just a quick look along here at some of the layer options I'm not gonna uh, spend too much time with this because basically everything we're going to be working with for the length of all these tutorials is working with layers and just through following the tutorials we're gonna you're gonna learn quite quickly to get to grips with these um, you've got the name here in the layer now you can change this if you press enter you can actually change this now to something you know, if you didn't want it to be called Football Alpha PSD for the sake of the project, you could just call it Football. And it just, you know, you could call this just simply BG. If I just press Enter and then BG. Now it's just, it's very handy tip to know that. You can rename things in your projects, give a nice simple descriptive term so that you can have a quick look and know exactly what it is you're working with. Um, just to the left of this, on the far left, you've got the eyeball picture. Now you can click this on and off, and as you can see up in the screen, that just turns on what you can see and what you can't see. Um, just to the right, these are called shy layers. Now, if you click, for instance, it looks like a little man just hiding behind a wall when I click that. Nothing changes until I click this up here. Then that will hide the layer that I've chosen as the shy layer or a shy layer which is very handy to know when you're dealing with a project with lots and lots of layers for in, you could have you know 50 layers open um, you could have say 20 of those selected as shy layers and when you want them hidden you do that it, it makes it very easy to organize um, and just have the layers visible that you need visible um, there's lots more options along here I'm not going to go into them right now um, because we don't need to know about them just yet and we'll be covering them in future tutorials okay so that pretty much covers everything I wanted to go over in a second tutorial in the next tutorial it's going to get a little bit more exciting we're going to look at keyframes the timeline some animation and what properties you can actually animate using After Effects and then you'll start to see just how powerful this software is.